There's a concept in app development called the Iron Triangle, and it basically goes like this. Good, cheap, fast, and you pick two. When you happen to find $40,000 in your spare pants, good and fast is a great way to go. But since Flutterflow is a tool that enables non-technical teams and individuals to build applications, well, I won't say that cheap and fast is the default, but actually I will say that. The result of cheap and fast is that if your app does achieve success, you end up buried in mountains of technical debt, every new feature will be more time consuming to build than the last, and you have a significant risk of being hacked. The majority of you watching will do cheap and fast anyway. Rise above, break the mold, I believe in you. It's super tempting when you start a new Flutterflow project and you follow all of the guides to get all set up with Firebase, maybe Superbase, and then you just sort of crack into the UI building and then you get into the really fun and exciting features like open AI integrations and Stripe functionality, Bluetooth, and so on. And there's a ridiculously simple step that is totally non-negotiable. Flutterflow has this built in. You just go to dev environments, create one, and then create a Firebase project with the name dev. That's it. Now your users have a totally isolated Firebase project that runs buttery smooth, and they aren't gonna get notifications that say things like test notification, and they never have to see posts in their feed and index lists that go along the lines of test, post, hi mom, this is a test. Please don't skip this. In fact, do it now. I'll wait. There's actually never been a better time to be a black hat cyber criminal. A lot of that has to do with the fact that AI generated slop code is going to be super insecure and it's going to be very prevalent over the next couple of years. In Flutterflow, it's a different issue in that we have an abstraction over our backends, which actually makes topics like row level security, Firestore rules, and third party integrations less easy to understand. Take Superbase row level security, for example. I'll put it this way I do not know of a use case where turning off row level security in Superbase would be necessary. Actually, I'll demonstrate why. Let's say I have a really simple table called recipes and everyone in my awesome cooking app can see all of my recipes, so it's pretty lax. I might be forgiven for thinking I don't need much security on something everyone can view anyway. And there's no edit button in the app, so it's not like someone can just change or delete my recipes. Oh wait, yes it is. All I have to do is grab the Superbase API URL from the console with ease. And by the way, you can reverse engineer an APK, so don't think you're safe if your app is mobile only. You smack it into a terminal and you run the update query. Et voila, arsenic flavored banana bread. Or I could just burn the whole table, so I hope you are making backups. When the skeleton of your application is made, send it to test flight, set up push notifications, get your development workflow and development databases working, set up your local environment if you need to get unit tests running, and do not assume that this stuff will just work later when you need it. Believing that you're 90% done with your app means you're about halfway. Let's talk about Firebase. When you start originally with Flutterflow, the tutorials will point you toward Firebase as this kind of one size fits all solution. It's fully integrated. The Flutterflow team went all in on Firebase and I love Firebase, it's awesome. Firestore is the database that you'll slip into as you follow the Flutterflow docs and guides. Firestore gets expensive, but there's a more fundamental reason why I urge you to stop and consider this early fork in the road. Firestore is simple to understand. You have key value pairs, right? So you basically name each piece of your data and then you just save the data in whatever way you like. Text, numbers, lists, dates, even more nested key value pairs. At first, this will feel intuitive and you'll wonder why people complain about Firestore so much. And before you know it, you're a year in and you're completely committed to Firestore. And that's when you'll realize why Flutterflow actually added Superbase support and why Superbase is talked about so much in the Flutterflow community. Superbase is awesome for a myriad of reasons. And if you want to learn more, you can check out this video up here. But really at this point, I just wanna point out that this is a major fork in the road and it happens early. And so it's really important to do your research and think about whether Firestore actually is the right fit for you. Okay, so in my view, this is Flutterflow's greatest failure. Flutterflow is a great tool, but this problem has caught out so many people and it comes up on Reddit weekly. And a lot of people who contact me about getting help with their applications have been really far along in their projects before they've realized this.
Now, as I said earlier, using Firestore alone can catch you out. It's expensive, it doesn't have full text search, the data is unstructured, and really important, you can't join tables together in the way that a SQL database can. I like using Supabase for this reason, as do a huge portion of Flutterflow users, but Supabase Auth is not compatible with iOS push notifications. You'll even see other YouTube videos showing you the process of setting up Firebase FCM with Supabase Auth, saving device tokens in Supabase tables, custom code implementations, webhooks. Problem is, all of that just doesn't work with iOS. And similar problems happen with one signal integration as well. And the workarounds for this problem are so ugly that you'll wonder why you're even using Flutterflow at all. Man, it is a hassle. Be aware of it, read up on it, make sure that your iOS push notifications are working with your Supabase setup before you get too deep into your app. There are a few options for solving the iOS push notifications issue with Supabase, all of which come with trade-offs. But if you want to know what my own personal approach to solving this problem is, this is the video you want to watch next. See you next time.